So as we gather here this evening, it is crucial to reflect on how our collective commitment to tithing has not only helped sustain our community, but has also empowered us to weather various challenges. Firstly, we have to acknowledge the significance of the BCBP in our respective lives. And uh, we are just more of a brotherhood. We are also a family bonded by faith who shared values and a commitment to service. However, as a family, we encounter trials and tribulations. And these challenges often manifest in the form of financial burdens, operational expenses, and the need for continuous growth and outreach. Amidst these challenges, amidst all these burdens that we are suffering, the practice of giving tithes emerges as a beacon of hope and strength. Tithing, which is the act of giving back to God a portion equivalent to one-tenth of our income. I emphasize this, tithes is one-tenth of our income. Serves as an expression of our faith and commitment. It is not merely about financial contributions. It is about investing in the spiritual well-being of our community and ensuring its sustainability for generations to come. Our loving God is very generous. He gives us all that we want to be able to live a very beautiful life. Okay? He wants that all aspects of our lives, including our finances, be guided by the Holy Spirit. God wants us to have a Christian outlook on how we are to manage our possession and money. In order to achieve this, God teaches us about tithings. So, let us discuss some basic truths. Okay. First is that God created everything. Second slide. Next slide, please. Everything that God creates is good. Next slide, please. God is the owner of all things. Next slide, please. And that God gave man stewardship or management over the universe. Now, based on these basic truths, it is very clear that God created only good things and He allowed us to enjoy the wealth in this universe. God is not opposed to our God is not opposed or against wealth. His only concern is that we will have a Christian attitude towards material things. Next slide, please. God made us stewards and managers of the things that He has created. He entrusted these things to us with the intention that we will use them wisely and in accordance to his plans. Next slide. Tithing has a rich and distinguished history. The first tithe giver mentioned in scripture is Abraham. Since the time of Abraham, people had expressed their stewardship over their possession through the giving of tithes, sharing of their resources, and giving of alms. Next slide, please. So, as mentioned before, earlier, tithing means giving back to God a tenth of our possessions, of our earnings, of our income, or anything that we receive from God. Next slide. Okay. By giving our tithes, we are acknowledging that God is the owner of our resources, and we admit that we are only stewards of the things that He has entrusted to us. Next slide, please. In the Old Testament, we find the giving of tithes as being commanded and practiced. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, we are commanded to set aside a tenth of all our fields produced each year, to give a tenth of our grain, wine, olive oil, firstborn of our cattle and sheep. Next slide, please. In Numbers chapter 18, the Lord has given to the Levites every tithe that the people of Israel had presented to him as payment for the services rendered by the Levites in taking care of his tent of his presence. Next slide. Giving of tithes is considered by God as holy. So if you have set aside something to God by way of tithes, you can no longer take it. Okay, so I would like to repeat this. Kung naana kay gasat aside para sa ginoo, by way of tithes, you can no longer 
take it away. You can no longer use it. Next slide, please. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, we are commanded to bring the full tithe to the storehouse or temple so that there will be plenty of food there. The practice of giving tithes was mentioned several times in the Old Testament. It was also practiced by Abraham and Jacob. And it became an established law again, under Moses. As the Old Testament era came to a close, a prophet of God delivered a searing indictment against God's people for their failure to follow this law. God's words was recorded by the prophet Malachi. Next slide, please. Okay. I ask you, is it right for a person to cheat God? Of course not. Yet you are cheating me. How you ask? How you ask? In the matter of tithes and offerings, a curse is on all of you because the whole nation is cheating me. Are we really cheating God, brothers and sisters? These are strong words indeed, but they highlight the fact that the tithe belongs to God, the one who gives us our strength and intelligence and life itself. Not to give a tenth is thievery against our Creator. Note, however, that obeying this particular law brings blessings. Once we involve our Creator in our financial affairs, He becomes our partner and guarantor, and then pours out the blessings and ensures our financial stability. Next slide, please. So that is the blessing that we are going to receive. God will open the windows of heaven and pour out on us an abundant blessings of all good things. Tithing in the New Testament times is not specific, but it is mentioned also. Next slide, please. As in Galatians chapter 6, those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. The teachings and the practices of the church may be summarized as follows. Next slide, please. Tithes consist of 10% of all income. Next slide. Payment of tithes is a divine obligation. Next slide. Tithes and alms are different. Okay. So tithes is equals to income times 10%. And alms is any amount coming from the 9 tenth balance of our income. Okay? So, unahon yun na to paghatag ang tithes. Mag-una yun siya. And from the balance thereof, uh, pwede na tag magkuha para sa alms giving. Okay. So, we have here the summary of teaching and practices of the church. No? So, non-payment of tithes was considered serious. Okay. In the BCBP, we considered financial giving as a part of our being a mature Christian. If this particular area of a person's Christian life is not in proper order, then we say that that particular person is not, in, is not fully committed to the BCBP community. He is also not committed to the vision and the mission of the brotherhood. And he is also not committed to the core values of the BCBP, which is one, love for God, two, love for community, three, commitment to the Lord's work. I would assume that all of you still remember talk number five when you took your BCLP. Loving God and neighbor. No? Talk number five. So one way to show our love for God is to give Him our talents, to give Him our treasures, and to give Him our time. Okay? So giving our tithes is one way of showing our love for God. Next slide. Okay, next slide. Okay. BCBP members are Christians who are called to a life of service, sharing and stewardship, and a commitment to support the life and mission of the BCBP by using and sharing the talents, the resources, and the time that God has given to you. Next slide. Each member of the Brotherhood has a responsibility to share for the continued existence of the community by giving a portion of his talents, time, and finances. 
However, this should be in accordance with his capacity to give. So if you do not have the financial capacity to give, are you then excused? Excuse ba ka? O dili? Isot to bago, no? <laughs> it becomes, it becomes a burden to us. Financially incapable pa yun, no? It required pa yun to give a tithe, bugat na yun kayo, no? Next slide, please. Okay. Members, okay, our community has programs to do, and we incur expenses along the way. So, we have BCLPs, we have breakfast, and many other activities, which requires some subsidy for its cost. So, if the members will not assist or assume financial responsibility, then our community cannot perform its evangelization program. That is why we need your financial support. Next slide, please. So, as I went around some chapters, there are chapters nga ang ilahang cost sa breakfast is 400 pesos. Okay. Unya, mangulikta lang sila ang 200. So, ang subsidy is 200 pesos. Okay. Now, there are four breakfasts in a month. So, 800 pesos ang subsidize sa chapter. That is only for one person. What if kopol na sila? Okay? And then, ang kopol, muhatag na og kinyintos every month by way of tithes. Lugi ang chapter. 1,006 minus 500. 1,100. Okay? Nag-tithe tood ka, pero kinyintos ay muhatag. You now become a burden to your chapter. <laughs> You are now becoming a burden to your chapter. How can I say? So, when I talk to the treasurer of this particular chapter, when I talk to the treasurer of this chapter, I subsidize. So, Kana, breakfast na na. What about in some other activities? So, brothers and sisters, there is really a need. No? There is really a need nga. Mutabang ta sa ato ang chapter. Let us try to see nga dili ta magpasubsidize sa ato ang chapter, sa ato ang mga activities. Maybe uh, we should put more heart in uh, giving back to the Lord. No? Giving back to the Lord. Okay. Doing God's works cannot be outdone by only a few, cannot only be done by only a few members or only a few members who are wealthy or those with surplus income. God's works should be done by all members in accordance with His means, and this can only be done by the giving of tithes or by increasing your pledges. So, in the BCBP, we all know this, we are not very strict in asking for the full tithe, asking for the full 10%. We are only asking for your pledge, which is any amount of money, <clears throat> hopefully not just like what I presented, siguro patasaan ninyo gamay, no? <laughs> which you have to commit to give on a regular basis. Okay? By regular basis, we mean to say that you can either give it every week, or once a month, or every quarter, or maybe semi-annual, or maybe once a year, no? Na may uban nga once a year gyud mo atag kay ang bonus sa nila mo iyang lang ihatag, no? Okay. The amount is not important to the BCBP. What is important is that you will give this regularly so that we will be able to come up with a sound uh, budget, no? Based on what we expect to receive from the members. Okay. And if you believe that your spiritual growth comes from the BCBP, then make BCBP as the channel for your tithes or your pledges. Okay. Remember, we are not asking for any percentage. All you have to do is to conduct more soul searching, more training of your conscience, more faith, more voluntary sacrifices, and less compulsion. Okay. Now, let us explore some, let us explore how tithing has enabled the BCBP to survive and try through its burdens. Okay. 
because you are giving tithes or because you are giving your pledges, the community was able to have a financial stability. Okay. Tithing forms part, forms the be bedrock of our financial stability through the consistent contributions of our members, you know, we are able to meet operational expenses, support outreach programs, and invest in the growth of our community. This financial stability provides us with the resources necessary to navigate through turbulent times and emerge stronger on the other side. Your tithes or your pledges likewise empowers us in our outreach programs. Your commitment enabled us to extend outreach to the outreach and impact beyond our immediate community. Okay. Whether it's through charitable initiatives, community projects, or supporting those in need, Titan empowered us to make a tangible difference in the lives of others. It allowed us to fulfill our mission of spreading God's love and compassion to all corners of the world. Titan and pledge giving likewise fostered unity among the members. Tithing is not just about individual contributions. It is, about also, it is also about fostering a sense of unity and solidarity within the community. When we come together to give, we strengthen the bonds of fellowship and reinforce our shared commitment to BCBP's mission and values. This unity serves as a source of encouragement and support, especially during times of adversity. Okay. Tight giving also enriched us spiritually. Beyond its practical implications, tithing is a deeply spiritual practice that enriches our relationship with God. It reminds us of our dependence on Him as our ultimate provider and sustainer. Through our willingness to give, we demonstrate our trust in God's abundance and provision, fostering a deeper sense of faith and gratitude within our community. The practice of tithing lies at the heart of BCBP's resilience and sustainability. It is through our collective commitment to giving back what we are able to over, that we are able to overcome challenges, empowering us and strengthening our bonds of fellowship. So as we continue to journey together, brothers and sisters, let us remain steadfast in our dedication to tithing, okay? knowing that through our faithfulness, we will continue to thrive as a community guided by God's grace. Allow me to share to you a short story. There was once a man who heard about tithes being given to the church. Every time he earns money, he sets aside 10% of it and places it inside an envelope. And then every Sunday, when he goes to church, he would give his tithes. This practice went on for a long time. However, during those times when he does not have any income, he will borrow the money from what he has set aside from his tithes. No? Katong souls yang envelope, yang hukman. Okay, nagnihit lagi. Huwag lagi siya kwarta. No? So he will just say, Lord, ako usang huwaman kining akong tithes. And I promise to repay you someday. Unfortunately, the man was not able to return what he had borrowed. No? Can I be tao mangutang tao sa hai? Magdisultag bayad. No? Mangutu yung nahitabo sa tao. So he ended up facing budgetary constraints. Eventually, he stopped giving his tithes. Okay. The man did not realize that when you set aside something for God, it is for him and should not be used for any other thing. So the man likewise did not realize that having budgetary constraints should not have made him stop from giving his tithes because by doing so, he had closed the windows of heaven from pouring out its blessings. So one day the man made another promise to God. This time he said, Lord, if imo ko tagaan ng kwarta, akong ipromise nga ako na jukang bahinan. So God, in his immeasurable mercy, gave the man another chance. The man started to give back to the Lord a portion of his financial blessings, but it was not the full 10%. He started with just a certain amount of money, and as the years passed, 
the amount he shared to God likewise increased. There were even times when he put the Lord to the test. Every time this man wanted to receive big financial blessings, he would make an advance payment. No? He was thinking like a businessman. He was thinking like an investor. No? For example, if he wants to receive the amount of 100,000 in one particular month, he would make an advance payment of 10,000. No? Even though wala pa na na earn na income, no? Naghatag na siya. In insurance, no? In insurance, this is what we call borrowing from success. No? Borrowing from success. Okay. So lo and behold, just like what God had promised, he opened the windows of heaven and poured out upon the man an abundance of good things. Okay. So the man finally changed his wrong belief that sharing his resources to God was an obligation, that sharing his resources to God was a burden. He came to realize that because of God's love, he shared his riches to him to enable him and his family to live the week during the week giving him the health and the energy to earn a living. So every time the man would share his money to God, he thanked the Lord that once again he has fulfilled his promise that he will open the windows of heaven to pour out his abundant blessings. When this man made God his financial partner, God brought stability to his finances and well-being. My brothers and sisters, I am not asking you to believe my story. But I am asking you to look at the face of the man standing in front of you because you have just heard a portion of his life story. I was that man in a story. I was an unbeliever of tithes. But then, when I started to give it, starting in the year 1996, no? Gamay pa anak, Mubo mo dyan kayo to. Kung na ako'y notaryuhan nga usa gatos, 10 pesos isuod sa envelope. Inigato sa simbahan mo, taging tinggo na, inigkuhan, tuk! Okay? But as our children grew up, huot ba yun kayo? Dilit ba yun daghang kay kaso ang makuha sa abogado? So magsige kong huwam sa tayas nga akong kisat aside. Nakautang kus ginoo, wa yung ko kabayad sa interest. Perte yung paita. But when, once again, I made the result, Lord, taga ilang yung ko, huwag another chance. And when he gave me the chance, when he gave me the chance, never again did I stop paying the full tight. Since the time God gave me that second chance, we are giving the full tight. Full tight, daily net of tax, gross, based on gross. Brothers and sisters, sa pagsugod na gilisod, anak, but when you internalize it, that burden will be taken out from you. Gamay rajod kaya na ang jis porcento kung inyong hononaon. Count the several blessings that you have received. No? Count it. You will realize, kamay ragun kaya na. Okay. So with that, brothers and sisters, I just hope that you will unburden yourself from sharing your financial resources, from sharing it back to God. Thank you and good evening.